Rift is finally back after a multi-year long hiatus. It is back as a part of Iron Banner, both regular and freelance. How we looking? Let's start with some group play in a six stack. Played in a six stack for a couple of hours, mostly stomped over other teams. I think we got one, maybe two games against other six stacks. The game we played against another six stack was very intense, very close game, and very enjoyable. When things are good, it is really good. A lot of really solid back and forth when the teams are balanced. It was a lot of fun. If you're playing against a six stack and you're not in a stack yourself, probably not that fun, but such is life in Destiny PvP for every single mode that has ever existed. Most of the time, if you can take out like two or three people on the enemy team, you can pretty much just snowball down the middle and there's not a whole lot people can do about it, but this was the same in D1 and it's basically the same in every other mode where a six stack is most of the time gonna stomp a not six stack. Which brings me to the solo queue experience. Now, before I get into that, I want to acknowledge the technical issues, the spark despawning, the endless transmat teleports, anything related to a technical issue. Annoying? Sure. Do I think this is going to be a long-term problem? No. I did experience these bugs during my time playing, including a 6 versus 6 stack match, which kind of sucked because I was looking forward to playing that game. But I don't envision these things being a long-term issue. They are technical issues. They can be fixed. They are not design choices or anything like that where there may be an unclear answer or choice. Again, annoying? Yeah. Did it completely ruin my time? Absolutely not. I left the match if there was a problem. I found a new one in a minute or two. That's about it. I just saw a lot of theatrics about that, and I was not as dramatic about these issues as other people. You know, bugs are going to happen. I get it. This was not happening to me every single game or anything like that. It was happening a small amount of the time. But given how many technical issues and bugs it has felt like we've had this season, I get that it can feel a lot worse than it actually is. Map-wise, only three maps available. We got the new one, Divergence, and then we have Convergence and Bannerfall. I am in the minority and don't actually mind Convergence. The new map is definitely very big and I'm still kind of learning it so I don't feel comfortable giving too much feedback on it just yet other than there's a lot to learn on it. This seems like it would be a great time to try to import some more old D1 Rift compatible maps, but I imagine it's only these three because they're the most symmetrical. Although I think you could cram some other maps in there. It wouldn't be perfect though, and I'm sure there will be some imbalanced sides, which would lead to complaining about spawns and team balance and all this. So, you know, you get it. The solo experience. Okay. Didn't have as good of a time here, at least earlier in the day. Although I did play some games off stream later at night and I had a significantly better time. Do I think this is partly because people don't really know how to play Rift very well? Do I think this is partly because people are still treating it like deathmatch? Yes. In D1, the scoring method for the game included kills, assists, blah -de blah whatever else, dunks. It was not just dunks. Although, generally speaking, if you got the most Rift goals, you probably won the game. This means that even if you didn't win, you could still see your individual contributions to the match. Control, for example. Even if you don't win, if you still did well in a match, you could see that reflected on the scoreboard and you could come away from that match with something. In Rift, there is no such thing. If you lost, it doesn't matter if you got 50 kills, you never died, you never see that stuff on the scoreboard. Nobody sees it. The only thing that matters is that you lost, which is both good and bad in my eyes. It's good because people literally cannot focus on things like KDA ratios. They can't be distracted by solo stats. Although it does feel like the game gives all of the glory to the Rift Runners and almost nobody else. It feels a little bad seeing the endgame screen and my contributions in the game were like 00103 or something like that. It is purely a team-based game. The team wins, the team loses. You can't point at KDA and be like, oh, look at all I did, team bad, blah, blah, blah. It's only the relevant stats. 
But if you lose in control, you can still feel like you won if you had a good game, not in Rift, which is why I think it's also a little bad. It can make losses feel that much more brutal, although this depends on your skill level and your perspective. I imagine lesser skilled players probably don't have as much of an issue with this because no one sees that you're rocking a 6 and 17 stat screen. You can't be blamed for a loss or anything like that. I don't think many people mind the whole scoring system that much compared to larger issues. This is more of a me personally thing because I just like knowing how well I did in a match. I like to know how much I contributed. Okay, let's talk more differences. D1 versus D2. The biggest thing I think I can mention is the lack of revives in D1 and the fact that dropping the spark returns it to the middle in D1. D1, the respawn timer is 7 seconds. D2, it's 10. I think revives are what ultimately lead teams to snowball. If you win the initial gunfight, you can revive your teammates and basically go for like a six on three or a five on two while the enemy team waits for respawns. Not to mention roaming supers like Golden Gun and Hammer basically lead to free caps, although that's not very different compared to D1. This gives you really strong map control and the ability to kill people in their spawn, which leads to even more staggered spawns on the enemy team, which leads to weaker defenses. I saw people sprinting to enemy spawns before the first fight even started just to try to spawn trap people. The super long respawn timer leads to a lot of downtime and on smaller maps like Bannerfall can lead to situations where you might die and not revive in time to even have a chance at defending, which feels bad. Look at this footage, for example. I'm grabbing the spark and dunking it before a bunch of people even get to respawn. I had it suggested to me that you should be able to either self-revive in 7 seconds or let your ghost stay out in the open for a little bit longer in case someone can get to revive you or something like that. I think that's an interesting idea. Also, when it comes to snowballing, I feel like it's almost impossible to come back from a 3-0 or 4-0 deficit. Of course, literally as I was having this conversation with Jez about this, I mounted a 0-4 comeback to make it 4-4, only to lose in overtime, so that's fun. But it was on Bannerfall, which is probably the only map that could even allow for such a comeback to happen. And it was the only time that I got to see multi-spark the whole day. Going down 3-0 can make games basically feel hopeless. Like, you're just playing out the rest of the game, and you're probably not going to get anything out of it. And that's on top of just not really having the ability to will your team to victory. There are so many elements out of your control, which can also lead to games feeling completely lost before they even get started. Can't really control the teammate who yoinks the spark and tries to solo run it up mid every single time. The difference versus other modes is that in Rift, there's no mercy ruling, and there's no mercy ruling because it is possible to come back from a deficit with enough time on the clock. Possible is not probable, though. I don't think I mind it a ton that it's first to five, but if they wanted to chop this down to first to four or potentially even three, I don't think I would mind that either, although matches to three might end up being a little bit short. I would love to know the amount of games where a team that went up 3-0 or 4-0 ended up losing or even getting tied, something like that. Also, a quick note on power ammo. This spawns at a really weird time. If you win the fight at mid for the spark, not only do you get the spark, you also have the numbers in terms of players, and you also get power ammo. I'm not really saying give the losing team power ammo, but it just doesn't feel great that the team that is actively winning is now getting to win even more. In D1, I feel like power ammo was spawning around the same time as the spark was dropping and or it spawned in between spark spawns. So there was another objective to fight around, but I could be totally wrong on that. On the new map, Divergence, the biggest map, and even on Convergence, sometimes you wait all that time to respawn only to be another 5 to 10 second run away from getting into a position to even defend. Sometimes you respawn in the middle of the map, although that usually only happens when the enemy team is basically in your spawn already. And they're probably dunking the spark, so I get that. You don't want to enable the enemy team to just spawn trap people as they're reviving in. But also, if you spawn mid-map, there's zero chance you can do anything. But at least you're not getting spawn killed? Basically, revives can lead to huge snowballing. Whereas in D1, the combat before trying to grab the spark slows things down a little bit. 
You can't recover as easily when you can't revive, but the respawns are a little bit shorter to compensate. The respawns are long to incentivize reviving people, but when you aren't revived, it can be infuriating to wait that long and then also run back to the action. And it can also be infuriating to see people not try to revive you. The spark returning to the middle in D1 versus being able to pick it up in D2 when someone dies holding the spark. I think I like being able to pick it up in D2 over what was happening in D1. I like that it's an option because it feels like it can save some time. There were so many times in D1 where I would kill someone immediately after they picked up the spark. And if that happened, you just have to sit around for 15 to 20 seconds waiting for it to respawn versus what it's like right now where you can just pick it up. This is something that at the moment I don't mind at all. I think this is fine. Another very significant change is the complete reset of teams after a goal. Everyone fades to black and respawns about five seconds later. In D1, they respawned the spark at the middle after about 30 seconds after a successful goal. So this new method technically gets the spark back to the middle around the same time that it took in D1. For me, I looked at the fade to black as sort of a mental reset. It definitely makes things more balanced in that everyone is exactly back to their starting positions. But I totally get how people feel when they say it brings them out of the experience or just grinds things to a halt, especially when people load very slowly. This is not something I have the biggest problem with at all, but I know it is a piece of feedback that I've been seeing a lot. Now, I will fully admit that part of the reason I loved playing Rift in D1 was because there were games that I could solo carry. There's a game on this channel where I get Mark of the Unbroken, which is Destiny 1 speak for get 20 or more kills in a match and don't die. Maybe it was 15, I don't remember. And Perfect Runner. Three spark pickups, three dunks. I wasn't doing this every game, but I did it with a small level of frequency. I could and would drag my team to victory. I don't think I'll ever be able to get close to doing anything like this in D2. Not a chance. It is much harder to will your team to victory. You can only give them so many opportunities for success. Sandbox wise, feels like there's a lot of ability spam. It feels like there's three grenades waiting for me anywhere I go with the spark or anywhere I go, period. That's not really Rift's fault though. Grenade launchers though, as someone who knows a lot about being cringe, GLs, still cringe. I have never liked playing against grenade launchers in PvP. I never will. Wither Horde, Dead Messenger, Waveframe, Salvager, Salvo. These are strategic choices in Rift. I understand. People are naturally grouping up, going as a team. You flush them out with a grenade launcher shot. I get it. But also, I hate it so much. Nothing like both teams spamming Wither Horde on the spark when it drops so that nobody can pick it up at all. I hate it. But this is not something that you can tune out of Rift. You're not going to sandbox your way out of Wither Horde existing. Just need to live with that. Also, Iron Banner tends to bring out the most tryhard in people, and people are also going for titles. I know it's only the first day of play. I played for about six hours, both solo and in a stack, but GL spam is not something I see going away. Sort of like a Gambit situation. In a controlled environment, Gambit is amazing. But as soon as you unleash the full force of the Destiny sandbox upon it, it just goes haywire. Rift feels like one of those instances, although not nearly to the same degree. So what do I want to see out of Rift going forward? I appreciate that Bungie tried to change some stuff up. I'm guessing they tried straight up copying the D1 format, placing it into D2, and tried it all out to see what worked and what didn't. I'm guessing they tried a few iterations and things ended up being what they ended up being for specific reasons. I would like to see how Rift would play out if you did just straight up copy the D1 format though and just put it into D2. I understand that D1 and D2 might as well be completely different games when it comes to sandbox though, and perhaps the D1 rules don't translate as well into D2. I don't know. Otherwise, I think snowballing is probably the biggest priority for me right now and, and stopping it. One team wipe on Bannerfall, it's over. You're, you're going to cap and that's it. The new map, Divergence, you at least have a chance to fight back strictly because the map is so big. So it's not as much of a problem there. But the power ammo situation on that map can create problems with the timing on when it spawns in. Convergence is sort of in between both maps, 
but the spawns on Convergence feel so far away from the rift sometimes that you can definitely run it up mid after a semi-team wipe, and there's not a whole lot the enemy team can do about it. I'm definitely not as cynical as everyone else. I definitely had some rough moments playing solo, not gonna lie, but I also had some good ones, and I enjoyed it much more off stream. Hopefully Bungie can bring some tweaks to the second Iron Banner that'll come around this season. I'm guessing they're gathering data for this week's, so I don't anticipate any changes, but, you know, who knows. That's all I got on Rift. That's it. Let me know how you're feeling about it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.